Hi there. This is just a quick tutorial showing how to use AOVs in Redshift for Houdini. So AOVs stand for additional output variables and they're a way to give you flexibility to change things in a compositing program after you've already done your render. So I've done a little abstract scene here in Houdini and I've rendered it out and brought it into Nuke. And as well as the beauty that we're looking at here, I've also output some additional lighting layers. So I've got diffuse, global illumination, reflection, specular, and subsurface scattering. And I can add these together with plus nodes over the top of each other. And all those added up creates an image that's the same as our beauty. So it's quite handy to be able to split things apart and put things back together like that because it allows us to change things. So as an example, I might want to change the amount of global illumination in the scene. So I can turn global illumination up and down. I might want to change the amount of highlights in the scene so I can uh, make things, you know, more or less shiny in the scene. I've also output an additional uh, matte layer here. So that can be useful for selecting objects. I've got uh, different objects uh, outputting into the different channels of the image. So that allows me to select things and change them. So as an example, I might want to change the color of the spheres. I can do slight you know, color adjustments here. I might want to change the amount of shininess on just the spheres. So that's that can look quite there I can I can make really shiny spheres or I can turn all the all the specular highlights off in the spheres. So yeah, really useful stuff. We'll go into Houdini and we'll show you how we set it up. So this is my Houdini scene. I've got three objects here. I've got uh, spheres, the ground and the crystals. And I've already set up my redshift ROP. So I should be able to just hit render in the render view. There we are. Now, when we're going to set up AOVs, the first thing we want to do is to turn progressive rendering off. Because progressive rendering doesn't work with AOVs. Uh, progressive rendering is good for adjusting light levels and uh, you know, colors and shaders and things. But when we're moving on to uh, making our sampling settings and setting up AOVs we want to turn progressive rendering off and to add o AOVs we just go to the output tab there's an AOV tab there and we just click the plus button and every time you click that it makes a new one you sliding by default I had five lighting layers so I'm just going to add five there I'm just going to change uh, what they are so by default it's got diffuse Add a reflection, a specular, specular lighting there, uh, global illumination, and subsurface scattering. Last one. Should just be able to hit render there. There we are. It's coming in in buckets now because it's not set to progressive rendering. Mm -hmm. And if we want to view them, we just go up the top of the render view. And by default, th these are the channels of the image. So that's color. And I've got the ones that I added. The reason I chose these particular five uh, layers is because I know what shaders are in the scene and what I need to construct the image again. Uh, I know that the, I've got crystals which you know aren't refractive. They have a little bit of subsurface scattering. I guess if you're interested in finding out how to add these layers together to make your original image, it's worthwhile having a look at the documentation. So there's an AOV section there, and there's an AOV tutorial, and part way down, it's got a the formula uh, for how to add things together. Uh, it's got it creates the diffuse lighting out of diffuse filter and diffuse lighting raw. Uh, that just gives you a bit more control. But that, that little formula there might be uh, a good thing to look at for reference. Okay, as well as these lighting passes, I also had some mats. 
So I'm going to add two more AOVs here. There's the ones that I'm going to add are Puzzle Mat. Where's Puzzle Mat? There it is. So Puzzle Mat's my preferred option. And I'm also going to add Object ID, which is probably a bit easier to set up, but it's, it's not quite as, uh, it doesn't, doesn't give you quite as good results. So Puzzle Mat, you'll notice, has a few more options than the other AOVs. It's got a mode and it's got ID numbers for the different channels of the image. So I'm using Object ID, so I'll change Mode to uh, Object ID. And then it's got to read these RGB ID values. So that means I have to add them to my objects. So let's go and have a look at our objects in the scene. And when we want to add an object ID to an object, we select the object and then go to the Redshift tab and go Add OBJ Parameters. And that creates a little Redshift tab. I've already done it on this object. And then on the first page of that is Object ID. I've set that to one. I've already set these up. So that's set to two. And that's set to three. So when we go back to our ROP, we want to change the red, green, and blue cha uh, channels to one, two, and three. And that means they'll output into the correct uh, color channel. In the Just do another quick render. So you'll notice I've got Puzzle Mat and Object ID here. So if I click on Puzzle Mat, there we go. I've got the Object 1, which is the spheres, is in the red channel. Object 2, which is the ground, is in the green channel, etc., etc. So that gives you a, a very nice map, but it's a bit more to set up. The Object ID pass here is a bit different. It just outputs the object ID straight. So it'll object, uh, output the value 1, 2, and 3. Uh, obviously, one, uh, 1, 2, and 3 are all higher than 1, so it's made the image completely white. But we can go and uh, set the range of the display here, and we can see it's doing mats for each of those. We can look at the inspector and see that that one is set to 1, that is set to 3 and uh, the ground is set to 2 there. The thing about the object ID is it's not quite as good quality. Uh, you'll notice it's a bit grainy. It tends to, it's easier to set up but it doesn't, doesn't give you quite as nice results. I tend to want good mats so I'll use Puzzle Mat. If you're familiar with V-Ray, V-Ray's uh, multi-mat and Redshift's Puzzle Mat are exactly the same thing. So Puzzle Mat's a bit better quality. It also gives you the option to, to use Reflect and Refract IDs, which can be handy in a lot of cases too. Okay, so I'm going to turn Object ID off. So I'll just click the little cross there and get rid of it. And if we want to output to an EXR file, which is the best way to get it into Nuke, you go to the output tab and then common and then enable image file output and I find the most organized way to do it is to create the AOVs into the EXR file so in this multi-layered EXR file here I set that to full multi-layered EXR file it's uh, much needed that way and then when we we've rendered out that EXR file we can just load it in in one reader and when we view that EXR file, see the channels here in Nuke. So there we are. That's just a really quick summary of how AOVs in Redshift for Houdini work.